as a technique to provide secure authentication to your app, OTPs or one-time passwords are super useful. So let's dig into how to use them. So OTPs are one-time passwords. That means that every time you use them, they become invalid. So you need to generate them again. And because of this, this nature, they are immune to replay attacks. So your user is, cannot leak something they don't have because the, the OTP is going to be regenerated every time they used. And they're commonly delivered with SMS, email, or with an authenticator app. The authenticator app uses a special kind of OTP, which is a time-based one-time password. And that means that your service is going to provide the Authenticator app with a hash with which they can use a time-based algorithm to create this sequence of characters. In this video, we're going to look at a generic OTP. So it's not time-based and we're going to deliver them with email. So for that, we're going to have a solid start app that's going to be connected with a Tursal database and for us to store this OTP for checks with a limited amount of time. And we are going to use Resend to deliver this through email. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into the code. So welcome to this code base. And this is actually an app that I've been working on for a little while. So it already has a lot of stuff going on here. There's solid UI, there's a few fonts, there's Drizzle, there's some icons, there's Post Hog, there's Sentry. So don't look too much into it, but it is a solid start app and it is running. So that's what you can see on the on my browser right next to it. And to get OTP working, the first thing I believe you should do is go to your database schemas and create a new table for the OTP verification. So that's what I'm doing right here. So I'm naming this OTP underscore verification and I'm setting a primary key. The owner is actually a relation to my user. And then the actual data that the token needs is the value and the expiry date. So this is what I'm going to push when I create one. And the way that Drizzle works is once I do this, I can then pop up my terminal and I can use this task called generate a migration, it's going to run. Right now it's going to see that there's no schema to change because I already did the migration. And then I can just migrate it and it's going to apply all the migrations that were created by me in this case and push it straight into my Turso database. And what these tasks actually do is the DB generate is going to use a drizzle kit CLI to generate my schema. It's going to then use the migrate CLI to migrate my schema. And they are all stored where I set them in the drizzle config. So if I say to, if I tell it, go there and pick my schemas from that place, and then you store all your migrations in this place, and then when I push, it's going to use those credentials that I set up in my .m file to my Tursal database and push everything that I need. So now that I have my table created and my database is ready to receive it, let's have a look on how we generate the OTP. So I have in here my tokens file where I create all the tokens that I need. So in this case, I'm generating a nonce, which is something we're going to use in a later video for the security headers. And I have the ref ID, which is something we're going to look at on when we're going to set up a mailing list or something like that in a different video. And right now we're going to look at the generate OTP method. So that what we're going to do is first to create a buffer and then a hash, which we are going to update the hash with the buffer, digest it into a hexadecimal, and then parse it into a hexadecimal number. And once that is done, we're going to then divide it by 10 on the base six. That's to ensure that we're going to have a six digits OTP. Then I'm going to convert it to string, 
and then we're going to just grab the first six digits. For the expiration date, I'm going to grab the date now and I'm going to add 10 minutes to it. And then I'm going to return an object, which I'm going to use the pad start to make sure that by any chance my algorithm didn't provide me with six characters. I'm going to make sure I'm going to fill the characters to the left until it makes six with zeros. And then I'm going to pass the expiration date. With that, I'm ready now to push that into my database. As you can see, I already have the token and the, the expiry keys, which are the ones that I need for my database. Now I go to my OTP management module and I have two methods here. One to insert the OTP in the database and the other one is to check the OTP that my user gave to me. So to insert the OTP in the database, we are going to then generate the OTP and I'm going to grab my user from the email because the user needs to enter the email there. If you see on the browser right there, there's only a button because my email is hard coded so I can demo it to you without doxing myself in the video, but it would be a login flow or something like that. Then we have the insert, which is I'm going to grab the OTP table that I have from the schema and I'm going to push a few values there. So in this case, I'm telling Drizzle and Turso is if there is a conflict, if I'm pushing a new token to already existing entry, just override it, just update it. And then I run the query and I return back the token that I just created. If not, there's an error and I'm going to log it or push it sentry or something like that. That's how we insert the OTP to the table. So now once we get to this flow where the user is going to enter their code, then we need to check the OTP. And for checking it, I'm going to then grab the OTP that I already have stored. So I'm grabbing, I'm having this select from this table and I'm going to see if there is a match. So if the token that I just, that the user just entered exists on my table or not. If there is one, I'm going to check if the expiration date is already passed. If it is, I'm going to return that it's expired. If I have the OTP and it's not expired, it's a valid one. If I don't have an OTP, then it's an invalid one. Anything else, there was an error and that's the moment you need to push it somewhere and make sure this never catches. So that's it. So now I'll grab an old OTP and it's going to say it's expired. And so I can send and ask for a new one. So now let's see how to send an OTP with email. So I come to my email file and OTP. And now what I have is just this send OTP one, which I'm then first going to call to insert the OTP because we just saw that this method generates a new OTP insert to my database and returns a token. So now I have the token that I need to send to my user. Um, if I don't have a token, there was an error and that's the moment we need to do something about it. And then I'm going to use resend. It has this method where I say who I'm sending from. So this is the domain I already authenticated. Two is going to be the user email that I just provided to send OTP. And then I can create some tags. I can add a few extra headers. And other than that, if there is an error, that's the moment you need to push to sentry and make sure it doesn't happen again. Other than that, I'll just log in my own terminal that I sent. And that's the data that uh, resend is going to send me as a confirmation. So now we are ready to go to this lovely UI and have a look how I implemented it. So as you can see in this route, I'm importing a bunch of components. The OTP form is a custom component, but, but I'm actually using that from Solid UI, which is using from Corvo. So everything is pretty much their example use case. So I totally recommend that. I have this on complete, which is going to be passed down to my component. And then I'm going to pass down forward to the OTP field. The regex expression is the pattern that's going to accept. So if I only want digits, which is my case, my OTP is just numbers, then I'll pass it that and it's not going to accept anything else. So as you can see here, I cannot 
put letters, I can just put numbers. And then everything else is going to be managed inside Solid UI and Corvo. I don't need to do anything else. My component is done. And then I also have this little confetti explosion that needs to be a client only app. So I need to do this dynamic import and make sure this only happens on the client side. And because solid confetti is not a default export, I then need to pass a then to, this, to the promise of my import and make sure I'm reassigning the module that I'm receiving dot confetti explosion to the default export because that's how client only works, only with the default export. Cool. So now once I submit this form, I'm going to have the verify OTP. The verify OTP is just a server function that's going to grab the OTP from the form submission and is going to call that set check OTP and then return my status to my JSX. That's it. Now it's just control flow logic. So as you can see, I created a submission over here where I'm passing the verify OTP action and then a little bit of HTML and then this is a nice part. I have the form. And as you can see, I'm using a ref because inside my form, I'm going to submit it with JavaScript in this case because I want to listen to the on complete of my OTP. I want to, as soon as the user finishes filling my OTP field, I want to verify it. They don't need to click on submit. So my OTP form is then receiving the ref that I just set here. So in this case, this would be the same as if I did something like document, query, selector, um, my form or whatever was the name of the ID I gave to it. And then I can do something like request submit. So that would be more or less the same thing. The only thing is that um, now I don't need to worry if it's server side rendered or not. I don't need to worry if my element were, was already attached to the DOM. I'm just passing the ref and I know I can use it like that. If you're dealing with an element that's going to be appended to the DOM and attached it later, you can use the callback form, which you're just going to then assign it like this. And here's the thing about the HTML that you need to know because we are tracking the use submission, right? So that allows us to do the pending state. It allows us to retry all the things we saw on the video on the use submission video that's linked right here and down. So because we're tracking the form submit event, we cannot do what you would usually do in a more imperative scenario where you can just call the form and submit it because the submit does not propagate the event. There's no submission event going on here. It just fires and that's it. What we want to do is to request the form to submit. That would be the same as clicking the button. Form.submit does not. Form.requestSubmit is going to propagate the event. So that means it's going to bubble up all the way up to my form and then my action is going to be triggered. And that's how I can track it and that's how I can have everything working. So now that we're going to create a new OTP, you can see here that I just got one and this is a very simple email, just simplistic pure HTML where you get a link that you can go there and you can copy this one. And once you're here, you can just paste it. It's going to get verified and boom, you get some confetti and your OTP is correct. And that was it. So. It, it it's kind of a complex workflow because you need to connect together a lot of moving pieces. But I hope it was, you feel confident now that you can implement that in your own apps. If you don't, let me know in the comments below if you have any more questions, feedback, or any ideas for follow-up videos. I'm always looking there. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.